Hello and welcome to today's session. In today's session, as you see on the screen, our topic is basically vector databases. So vector DBs are nothing but they store high dimensional vectors, which are a mathematical representation of various features or attributes. And uh, they are basically generated by applying different transformations or embedding functions to raw data or, or audio images, videos, etc. So we are going to talk about the the most frequently used one Facebook AI is similarity search and the other two are basically chroma DB and pinecone so there are many more other options available uh, in, in vector DBs but we are just going to talk about a couple of them uh, being if FAISS is the most frequently used one the other two are basically chroma DB and pinecone and what are the different topics we are going to cover in this the first one as you see it is face we will cover second one is we will talk about chroma db installation because uh, I'm, I'm recording this specifically from a windows laptop to show how to install chroma db because there are a lot of issues and i'm going to give the github link which has all the issues listed in that there are a couple of solutions as well but unless we try we never know which one is gonna work and we are going to see a couple of examples uh, by giving queries for chroma db uh, we will talk about pinecone examples and uh, there are some ssl errors which are uh, creating which are creating issues for pinecone and hugging face libraries then we will talk about cosine similarity Then what are the downsides of cosine similarity and do we have any other options such as uh, maximal margin relevance? Uh, how does it work? How does it compute? And one example to just see how does it work? All right, so let's get started with the notebook. What I have given this is the name of the notebook what I have given. So first uh, we'll have to import all the libraries required I'll, I'll just make this video fast in this import section. These are the libraries which we needed to import. So first, let's see the document we are going to extract and ask a lot of questions from that. So if you see here, this is a credit card related information. Uh, so this is available pretty much on the public domain, but still I would give the link in the description section of the video. So this is about credit cards and a lot more information about billing cycle, account number, industry history, what is the risk associated with it, different types of branding. So all this information have been given here right so maybe we'll take a couple of questions from that maybe one from branding aspect uh, and probably something else uh, related to the billing cycle etc let's just import the document first i would say it's already in the environment so i would say pdf reader and the name of the document is basically credit card one dot pdf and it's raw so let me just extract and just let's print and see if it has been extracted yeah this this is fine and now i have to do some basic pre-processing in order to extract the details so it is in the pdf format so we need to extract the inf the lines in that so i'm going to delete this so i would say raw text i would just give an empty string and then i would say for i and page in enumerate doc dot pages we have five to six pages in that and i would say text equal to 
page dot and if text is there then it would happen to draw text and then let me also print the length of the raw text it would be pretty large though so it has 18,933 that is the length of our raw text I would store in text splitter and I would use the function character text splitter and let me give a separator which is double lines and I would give chunk size as thousand and I would give chunk overlap as 200 and I would also say length function my tab is not working somehow so it is not able to predict the function properly but it's fine and I would say length so this is my function and I would just see text equal to text splitter and I would throw the raw text into that sorry there is a mistake so it should be text splitter okay I did that somehow it didn't work so split text raw text it should work now right and then we are also going to remove the garbage values which are not required for our analysis so here I'm going to define a function which would be clean text format and I'm going to give the string and separated token as an empty line and if we need to remove or replace some of the garbage values so i would say re dot sub this is my string and I'm going to give a strip so this will just strip and then I'm going to give re.sub and this would be a dot and a comma and then we are going to replace that with an empty space basically and then we have couple of replace options as well so I would say dot replace this would be double dot with a space in between and I'm going to replace with single dot and then we will also replace continuous double dots people while giving the feedbacks they may use these things so that also we will replace with single dot it would be a period for us and dot replace backslash n with a space and last I would say s equal to s dot strip and it would return a clean s for us and let's call the function text equal to list and I am going to map this particular function clean text format and I'm going to give text within that so now it would be a clean text and then let's store this particular clean text in the .txt format for future use 
so i would say this is my clean text and i'm going to store it in the form of txt and this is my write as file for line in text f dot write and line with uh, backslash and let's close so i'm going to store this one in my local for future requirements so after this we are going to give two queries which we will be using throughout so first i would say what is billing cycle and query number two i would say what is dual branding so this is about visa and mastercard dual branding and i'm also saying embeddings equal to open ai embeddings so this is something we can continue to use throughout right and then uh, we have to start with some sample embeddings where we can just see the sign similarity for an example so before we get into uh, facebook ai similarity we'll just see the sign similarity so i'm i'm going to give this section as sample embeddings and and let me give the first one embed one equal to get embedding and i'm saying risk based pricing and the engine i'm going to use is basically text embedding ada002 and there would be one more embedding which we will create and see if the cosine similarity is close and then i would say risk ranking applications applicants and i would give the engine as the same text embedding ada let me see the sign similarity this is between embed 1 and embed 2 so i'm going to give enter and let's see so it is saying 0.83 so they are almost in the same direction right and then we will start with facebook the embeddings from fiss and we'll start here so first let's get the embedding so fiss dot from text and we would be using this this text the clean text throughout and let me just give this text and i would also say embeddings which is using open ai embeddings db equal to db fiss so we are going to name the dbs as per the fiss or pinecone or chroma so we understand which db we are using to compare from so let me say db fiss dot embedding function sorry this is from text it would work now yeah so we got it now and we would not want to print because the details of the open ai everything will be visible so we are not going to print that and let's just give a simple similarity and i would say this is question 1 
that would be my db fss dot similarity search and let me give the query number one so it would just search and it would return our and then we can even print the page content of fss q1 and i can say zero dot page content let me leave a print here so this is this is what the entire details it is giving us so this is about first question and similarly we can search with the score so this is giving a lot of details basically so we would stop and we would also give more information so i would say uh, similarity search with score this time so we will be able to see the score what how much is it is it 0 0.55 0 0.8 whatever it is so let me again get similarity from relevance with score so yeah this is the one and i i will give the query one and let me store this in similar query one and i can even print the similar query and we can see the score for that particular question so if you see here i can see this is 0 0.50 which is not great which is not pretty similar and we want to use a qa chain chain run so that would give us details in a better manner instead of giving the entire or or a large part of the document at a time so i would say load qa chain so this is going to basically uh, chain run takes an input string and it is going to format and give us the output so that's what we are going to do now and i would say open ai and then we have to say chain type and this is stuff and let me give a chain for this the name so this is one and then i'm going to say db underscore fss dot similarity search and i can take a query two and i would say chain dot run and i would give input documents so i would explain what is happening here exactly Input documents okay this is q2 and question is query number two so basically we are uh, we are giving a chain for this so it can give us formatted text and it is going to search using query number two which is our um which is our query here query number two we have defined here sorry here what is dual branding and it is going to search in um fss q2 and it is going to give us the exact formatted text and when you do this you will get a very very small answer saying dual branding is when financial institutions blah blah you'll be getting a very crisp answer so this is basically it it would uh, create uh, from a large part of the document it would just give a very crisp answer very simple answer so this is about how do we do a similar search without score how do we get a similarity search with score and how do we get it using similarity search with chain run so now moving on we would now go for chroma db and we would start installation and other steps so let me just give the marking here so i would start embeddings from chroma db so before we go on so how do we install chroma db so let me give you the steps here so the first step is basically we can do a pip install chroma db but 
if it is working it is good if it is not working what is the next option we have to install my if it is already installed that is when chroma db will work for you if it is not installed then i would go to microsoft visual c++ and the version should be higher than 14 if it is less than 14 again we have to update that so it has to be higher than 14 start here right now so go to visual studio installer it would be there already if visual studio is installed in your system so go to visual studio installer go to visual studio build tools 2022 and you can go ahead and modify all the options here whatever is required this is exactly where if you see desktop development with c it should be ticked here and that's when all these five pointers will be ticked automatically based on this tick and that's when we can just say install or since it's already installed for me it is not giving a modify option otherwise it would provide a modify button here so this has to be installed and only then we can uh, install chroma db so after this is installed so since it's already installed it's not providing a button for me so after installation of this this is good 6 gb of all the files it would start installation and once that is done you have to start your system restart your system and then we need to for my system basically it has told me i have not got three more libraries which i will list it here so the third step is uh, modify visual studio installer for all c installer and then the fourth step is pip install more iter tools and it has to install number and the last one it is tick token 0.3.1 so first step if it is working if a uh, chroma db installation is not working follow step two three and four so two is install microsoft vc plus plus version more th uh, higher than 14 modify visual studio installer uh, as i have shown you and then the three uh, libraries it said for my system that it did not get it more iter tools numba and tiktok in 0.3.1 so after that it started working for me this is usually based on the github issues links and all this is the solution what i have found it should work after this one so the github issues link as well will be provided in the description section of this particular video and these steps whatever you see here will also be provided in the description section of the video so i would first say import chroma db and i would say in from lang chain dot embeddings dot sentence transformer import sentence transformer embeddings and this is this particular library will be uh, downloaded from hugging face website and then i would say langchain dot text splitter import character text splitter and also i would talk about from langchain uh, dot vector source import chroma and there is one more which we need to ins uh, import is one lang chain dot document loaders import text loader and this should work after all the steps we discussed and then i would say text loader is my clean text so the file which we saw here clean text that is what we are going to use 
so clean text dot txt it is good have to store everything in local uh, so that we are not even when we are losing the variables it's not a problem for us and we are going to say documents equal to loader dot load and then uh, we would also split these things into chunks i would say character text splitter and my chunk size is 1000 and chunk overlap so we had given all these details earlier as well in in if we want to change anything this is an option to change and i would say text splitter and then i would also say text splitter dot split documents and those are my documents which i want to split so this is what we are feeding here and i'm going to store this in docs one it is stored now in docs one so we are going to use a specific model there are a lot of other options which will come to that in a minute so we can use sentence transformer embeddings and model name there are multiple options which we can use model name i am going to give all mini lm l6 version 2 this is what i am going to give and uh, we will also see uh, what other options do we have for that and this is something i am going to store in something saying embedding function which we'll reuse later so i'm going to store this so when you download this for the first time it is going to take a lot of time it is going to download a lot of files but since it is already downloaded in my system it didn't take much of time so there are quite so there are quite a few options listed on hugging face site so which you can go ahead and you can use it so i have just used this one this is uh, this is the most frequently used one for sentence transformer em embeddings which is a trade off between the score and fast how fast is the model so now we are going to uh, say db underscore chroma this is a variable i'm going to store in and i'm saying chroma from documents i'm going to give the docs one which is this fellow here docs one and i'm going to give the embedding function which which is something which we have defined here so let me paste here so this database is because of chroma hence we named it uh, this is basically for database fiss so we named it according to that so this this removes any kind of confusion from different vector dbs so i'm going to store this here and then based on we have defined two questions question one and question two we can ask any question here so let me just give db underscore chroma similarity search and i'm going to give query one here and this is something chroma q1 for me and i can ask it to print chroma let's go q1 and i can give zero dot page content or i can just give zero just let's see what's the case so this is this is a large document given to us so we can further reduce it we can further use chain run and so on so let's just see with similarity search q2 what is it printing and then we will go for chain run so i'm going to give chroma q2 so i'm just giving for chroma we are asking the second question i'm saying db underscore chroma similarity search this is for query number two and i'm also going to print the same so let me just take this and change it this is query number two yeah so this also gave a lot of information so now we are going to use chain run for that so let me say chain dot run and 
input documents equal to chroma question number one anything we can use that's not a problem and which questions should i search for i'm going to search for question number one so let me give query one so this is going to give us more information which is in crisp manner and then we can compare this output to the output given by the previous model probably yeah i think we have used query 2 we can use query 2 here just to compare you know apple to apple so let me give query 2 here and let's see the output so dual branding is when a visa or mastercard bank also offers american express so dual branding is when financial institutions offer both visa so there is slight difference in terms of how the processing happens here to there that's why we just gave query number two so we understand how it is working exactly there is slight difference for sure but it's it's very minimal right so now let's see what parameters can we change in the collection metadata so let me give another question so i would say question custom so this would be a different one so i can talk about what are the benefits of risk based pricing so this is part of our uh, pdf file so i can just uh, give some other uh, parameters from collection metadata so i'm just going to say chroma from documents and i can just say documents equal to documents one that is docs one and i can also give embedding this can be embedding from OpenAI, which we have specified, or this can be an embedding from uh, the Hugging Face library. Any of that would work. And then I can just specify collection metadata. And this is where we have different options to give. So the first one is the similarity search so i can give anything we want so there are three different options so one is l2 l2 is the default one there is another cosine uh, which is most of us know what is cosine similarity and there is one more ip so these are the three options we have and in order to call this particular function we can just store in some variable i would say db chroma one and in order to call this or search for the specific query i can just say chroma cos and i'm going to uh, search from db underscore chroma one and this is on similarity search and give let me give the query custom so this is what we can specify i'm not running this function right now so th this is how we can specify different collection metadata and the similarity search metric and with this function sometimes you may encounter issues so how do we delete a specific um, metadata is this is how so we can just say try if you are able to render good if you are not able to render it can delete the collection so i can say doc search equal to chroma from documents and i can give which document do i need to delete to so i'm just saying documents equal to docs one we can delete this and we can use different embedding functions right so i want to use i want to use embeddings and i want to delete the other embedding function which is in my case the name of the uh, hugging face embedding is embedding function and i want to delete this i can delete that and if you are not getting this it would automatically delete then if if you are getting some invalid dimension exception so i can say invalid dimension exception and i can delete the particular collection so i can say chroma delete 
collection and I can say doc search chroma from documents the same we can just paste this one so if it is not able to render it would just go ahead and delete the collection however I'm not running this particular function right now because I'm going to use that maybe uh, in a couple of other similarity searches or so and uh, this is how we can specify collection metadata so now moving on we have another type of vector DB we can talk about which is pine cone so let's talk about this particular vector DB now what do we need to work with Pinecone? So Pinecone is basically created by uh, professionals from AWS and Yahoo. So it needs another API key on its own. So in, a, or in, in addition to the OpenAI API key, we would need Pinecone API key as well. So these are the two keys which would be required. So we need to specify in the environment variables. And sometimes we are also facing issues in certificates so I'm just going to specify it here so this is one and we are facing issues such as certificate related so we can just go ahead and add certificate in Windows from start option and how do we update the certificate is with this particular function python m pip install upgrade certify this is the command we can use to upgrade the certificates and sometimes also we are facing issues with regards to the proxy setup especially if the system is office provided one so we have to check proxy setup uh, in, in, in case of any issues, the API is not reachable and so on. So these are a couple of issues or pointers about Pinecone. So I'm going to show you how to get the Pinecone API. So we can just go to the Pinecone site and we can just create an API. For the first time loggers, I think it is already there. One API is already created. So let's go and check there. So as you see, this is the site and these are the starter API keys. One is already provided. I can just copy this particular value and I can provide in my environment variables by uh, specifying pinecone.init. So let's go ahead and specify. So first, we need to import a couple of libraries from Langchain as usual. So let's first import those libraries, langchain.embeddings.openai, import openai embeddings. And then I would also import langchain vector stores. So langchain.vector stores, import pine cone and the third third one is pinecone itself so we need to specify this particular op, uh, these particular libraries so let me import these libraries first so libraries are imported now we need to specify the environment variables so i have just specified the environment variables but i have deleted the cell in order to protect the privacy of the api key so we can start working on pinecone uh, vector DB. So I would say I can create a new index which can talk about I would say first demo and I would also say if index name not in pinecone dot list indexes pinecone create index I would give name is index name and I can say metric we can pre-specify what is the metric we want to use for similarity search and I can give metric is cosine and I can also say dimension is 
1536 so this is from the documentation of pinecone api so we can if there is already no first demo index name it would create one in its place it is created now and let's just get the complete embeddings from the document so i would say pinecone from documents so this is a capital p and this is also a capital p so we can just rerun this and now it would work pinecone from documents docs one and i would also say embeddings and index name is first demo and i need to store it in something called as db underscore pine cone and also we can just get a similarity question so i would say db underscore pine cone dot similarity search and i can give query number two which we had specified earlier and from this itself we can give chain dot run as well so I will input documents is pc q2 and i would give question as query 2 so this would specifically search for query number 2 so let's give and check what output do we get so we are talking about dual branding is when a financial institution offers both visa and mastercard as well as american express and discover so this is slightly different from what output did we get from the other other uh, vector dbs that is from uh, chroma as well as from face so there are a couple of new concepts apart from cosine similarity so let's check some of them so max marginal relevance is nothing but how the documents are uh, searched and provided to the user which is similar to the question so the issue with cosine similarity is basically uh, it comes with a threshold but sometimes even the closest answers have lesser threshold which could be somewhere around 0 0.7 0 0.8 if we specify something like 0.95 and above the closest uh, uh, documents for the question asked may not get filtered so this is the main problem with cosine similarity so if we reduce the threshold we end up getting garbage output so this is the main problem with cosine similarity so how do we get rid of this particular issue so how the mmr works is the lambda value what we are specifying here is between 0 and 1 so the first time lambda value would be 0 0.5 and based on 0 0.5 it would retrieve documents similar to the query and second time onwards it would keep retrieving documents similar and it would also retrieve documents which are relevant so similar and relevant so what happens is the marginal relevance would retrieve the overall documents which are diverse in nature as well as which are similar to the question asked by the user let's see the pros and cons of this particular one as well so so these are the pros and cons basically so what happens is basically with pros it is um it is pretty uh, you know simple straightforward not very difficult one and relatively easier also to implement but there are a couple of issues as well so so it has to keep calculating relevance for all the documents and it is also sensitive the choice of similarity and distance metric so so cosine similarity and euclidean distance are most used ones but there are other metrics also which can be specified by the user so depending on that it is quite sensitive so that is about pros and cons of max marginal relevance so 
so since we have understood what is max marginal relevance let's try and get one example for that so i would say search for mmr and we would say mmr docs this is the variable i want to store in and db dot pinecone earlier we used to search for similarity search from any vector db and in this case since we are using using max marginal relevance search i would just use that function and we would specify query equal to two and fetch equal to fetch underscore k i'll come to that what is this about so fetch k is 10. so what exactly is query and fetch k so there is another parameter which i missed it is k equal to 2. so what is k and what is fetch k so first thing so k is basically your number of documents to return from mmr is number of documents to be passed for mmr algorithm so this is basically a trade-off between how many documents are we interested to pass and how many documents to return and this defaults to four and this defaults to 20. so if we specify lesser number of documents to be passed the results would be less relevant and if we give higher number of documents then it would be computationally expensive i would say for i and doc in enumerate mmr docs which we have mentioned here and i would say print i plus one so as it is searching and if it finds it relevant and diverse it keeps returning us so i would say i plus one and let me i plus one and let me give doc dot pages page content and we have to give a line empty line so let's see how the results come up it has returned a lot of text here and then we can run chain dot run on top of that to get us the exact what we want so it can give us the formatted one so i would say input documents is mmr docs and I want to give what question do I look for so I can just give a new question I would say so question so I would say just query this is MMR right I would say what is risk based pricing so so I would say what is risk based pricing and I am just giving this particular question is query mmr so this has to search in that particular document so we are facing issues of the number of tokens exceeding what is allowed by the models hence we just the num the the cell numbers have changed a bit so let's just read on this question so this is the output what we are getting biometric format we have asked the question what is biometric format so it is saying biometric format is a type of authentication system it gives little bit of details so this is how if we give cosine similarity probably the output would be slightly different so we so we can give the same question in cosine similarity and check what is the output we are getting over there we are giving the question again but that is not for max marginal relevance but that is for the regular similarity search uh, based on cosine similarity so let's see what is the output we are getting in that
it is slightly different if you see biometric format is a type of identification system and this is where we are saying it is a power format of authentication system so now you see this is the output we got from max marginal relevance and and this is the output we got from cosine similarity since we are giving the document which is small so the answer to our question does not vary a lot when it is retrieving between max marginal relevance and cosine similarity but when we are parsing a huge document uh, the answers would be quite different so we have different approaches on how do we work with cosine similarity or how do we work with max marginal uh, relevance search with different dbs so that's all for this session thank you for watching the video this is about ssl issue so how are we going to resolve this particular issue so now let's go to the pinecone website first so let me go to the site information we can click on this particular lock option and we can click on this connection is secure so ssl link is basically uh, it's 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 not proven that it is secure that's why it's throwing error and then we can go ahead and we can click on this small certificate option what you see we can click on this one we can uh, download and just we can install that particular option so that that is one method and the other one is basically you go to something called as certificates from start option and you land in this page we can just click on all tasks and we can just import that certificate we just downloaded so let me just import the certificate right now i'm just downloading this i'm just exporting now go to this certificate root certification authorities all tasks import i'm going to import that file browse i'm just importing that file okay the import was successful and now let me go ahead and try this if this does not work then we have to restart our uh, kernel jupyter notebook kernel and again just run all the functions so let's try